From a young age, when he was at school in, in Dubai, a good friend of his, Mohammed al Gurk, told us that uh, Saif, my father, always had a book in his hand and he'd always be ready to discuss anything that he'd be reading and chat to his friends whether they were interested or not. That led on to really his, his drive and his passion for getting a, a strong and good education. At the age of 12, he um, uh, left the area of the Emirates, he went to Bahrain and then on to uh, Kuwait and uh, Iraq. Um, I, I look at it and think that he must have um, experienced so many uh, things that were different from what he'd known in the Emirates that uh, he must have been intrigued by it. He became a diplomat because he, as soon as he came back from his extensive travels uh, uh, and education in places like Russia and, and Germany, uh, he came back to uh, part of the Middle East uh, that was undergoing uh, massive changes. Uh, he, coming from Ras al-Khaimah, uh, got involved uh, with the ruling family uh, and Sheikh Sagar at the time, who was uh, leading the negotiations with the rest of the uh, Emirates uh, on unification. And I think that's when he began to sort of demonstrate the talents that he had, uh, the, the languages that he uh, um, had uh, acquired along the way, uh, and his ability to give sort of sound political advice uh, to, uh, to the ruler at the time. His relationship with Sheikh Zayed, as far as I've understood, was a very warm, respectful um, and collaborative relationship. He really bought into Sheikh Zayed's ideals for his country, his dreams for the UAE, for it to be a forward-thinking, tolerant society. And I know that my father worked really, really hard to support Sheikh Zayed's beliefs, as well as Ahmed Swedi. They all worked as a team together. So. I think that that's how he felt. He highly respected him and, and loved him as a leader. He became one of the key people who was able to provide insight and as well you know, to demonstrate his, his uh, knowledge of global affairs, uh, which was quite a kind of a rare thing here at the time. So I think my understanding is that that's exactly when he was spotted by the federal authorities, uh, and in particular Ahmed Swedi, uh, who then uh, assisted him um, and brought him into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs where he became Under Secretary to begin with, and then Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. So uh, having watched a number of the videos that, of my father at the United Nations General Assembly meetings, I, I, I've noticed there's an immense amount of passion in his voice when he would give his uh, annual speech. And if you compare it to what I experienced in the 1990s when I was at the UN, uh, you can tell that there was genuine uh, passion and loyalty uh, and a desire not just to uh, defend the Emirates uh, and to give expression to what the Emirates was about, but also to take up the Arab causes, in particular the cause of the Palestinians. So, I mean, I think it was a perfect mechanism to allow him to express his talents uh, at a time when the country really needed those kinds of talents. Going to ACS as a student, I started when I was five and I was very, very proud to be in first grade. I thought it was the best thing ever. It was a place where there were kids from all over the world that went to school and it was very tolerant, open. We you know, had different events that, where everyone shared different countries and their traditions. And um, so this tolerance and openness and supporting one another I believe would have really resonated with my father and the environment he wanted his children and other children to, to be growing up in. He became a board member of ACS through his personal friendship with both ambassadors during the time he was Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. I'm sure somehow they asked him to be involved and I know that he supported the school and believed in the principles that the school is run on and, and felt it would be a great place for us to go to school and, and we all, you know, my brother and I loved it and as my other brothers were slightly envious, you know, we really enjoyed our time there. ACS really defined the way that I began to uh, sort of understand the idea of community and the importance of friendships that last a lifetime, basically. Being given the Saif Akhbash Award for me was really very much an honor. To see somebody that was a leader in his capacity and somebody who was a maker for change and somebody who really had a community of thinkers and doers that were constituted all around him. It really sent me off in a very, into a very specific tra trajectory. For me, it was a very important moment to have that sort of parallel drawn between myself and His Excellency uh, Saif Abwash, Allah Yerahmah. I'm sure he would feel great pride in seeing how so many young men and women are growing up able to contribute in a positive manner to society nowadays, which we all need. He would be thrilled that everyone is accepting and tolerant and living together harmoniously. In terms of words of advice, he would still exhort them to work hard, persevere, don't give up, 
seek knowledge and read a lot. Knowing that uh, ACS continues to remember my father and give a, an award uh, in his honor, actually it's an amazing thing for us to know. I mean, we've, we've, we'd heard about it over the years and we've had all kinds of feelings about it, but overall it's actually a really wonderful uh, way of remembering him uh, and we're truly appreciative of it. Uh, and the fact that, you know, it's an award to students, I think it would be very, very dear to his heart had he known about this. Uh, so I think, you know, his, his short life um, pretty much can be summed up uh, with the ideas of, of hard work, hardship uh, and, and devotion to country. So I'd hope that, you know, other people, uh, other Emiratis uh, and, you know, other, other kids would, would uh, look at him in the same light.